One year ago, this plant looked like this. In today's video, I'm gonna share the progress of this plant over the course of this year and any tips and tricks I've got for you. Hey everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Philodendron El Choco Red has been on my wish list for the longest time, but it was honestly super unaffordable in Australia. It would have set me back multiple thousands of dollars just a couple of years ago. But then last year they started coming out of tissue culture and I got my hands on one of the first little plantlets uh, that I was able to find online for a fairly reasonable price. The only catch was that the plant was absolutely tiny, but that didn't stop me from trying to get the best out of this plant as quickly as possible. Now when I first got the plant I did absolutely nothing with it. It was already quite small as it is and it was shipped to me from Western Australia so already had to go through a little bit of shock. So when it arrived over here I just took it and put it in my IKEA cabinet which basically provides the plant with perfect conditions to reduce or eliminate or help the plant overcome any sort of shock that it would have experienced as part of the shipping. Then just a few weeks later, I thought it was time to give this plant its first repot and its first moss pulp. So let's have a look at what happened last year. I've got this teeny tiny El Choco Red over here. It was a tissue cultured plant and it came in just moss. It is a mess. It has, I think like three or four shoots. It's very common for tissue culture that they just start reshooting in like so many little spots. So I think there's three or four shoots on here, but look at this. Can you see these little roots sticking out? I want to get that on a moss pole ASAP. Now, because it is such a tiny plant, I don't want to put it on one of my big moss poles just yet because I want to keep that one in my IKEA cabinet. I'm thinking if I want this to mature any further, I should start getting it on a moss pole. And at the same time, with the moss pole, I'm propagating it. This is a plant that is still fairly sought after here in Australia. We only recently got this tissue cultured. And because we can't import plants, this plant was pretty much non-existent for the last two years. So. I have plenty of friends who would like a cutting, so I want to propagate it straight away. I was actually having dinner with friends when we discovered this one on the, on, the, on the website and we were like, oh my God, let's get our hands on it. And we were all buying it online and I actually snapped up the last one. So there was actually only one in stock and I was just the fastest. We didn't know there was only one in stock, but when my friend tried to check out, it was sold out and I literally just got my order confirmation. So I feel like I should give my friend a little cutting of this. So I want to propagate it ASAP. One moment, please. So I just got a little piece of wire so I can <clears throat> kind of pin this to the moss pole. Okay, let me bring you a bit closer. Can you see these roots here? You see these roots? Yeah. So I just want to pin that to the moss pole so that can make contact. And because the moss pole is see-through, I will actually see when this was successful. So that's very good. Plus, so this is a grow vertical. I just cut it in half to make it a bit smaller. Plus, I can now just put my little clip on. So these are the little clips that I use in my IKEA cabinet. And I can just hang it back in my IKEA cabinet with the moss pole. All right, and this is it now. So let me show you. Actually, this is an understatement of what it looks like right now because I actually cut off two vines already. So see how, um, so there's currently three vines on here. Number one, number two, the big one, and then number three. So there was two more of these smaller vines that were just kind of sticking out and didn't really attach to the pole. I have already cut them and I gave them to some of my friends when they came to visit from Queensland as a little present. So I'm really happy with the progress over here, specifically with this large main stem over here. And you can really see that new leaf that is coming out now. So the plant has already changed from growing. Um, so, you know, when plants are juvenile, they usually grow a leaf out of the la out of the petiole of the previous leaf, like like this one over here, right? So 
this leaf over here came out of the petiole from the previous leaf. When they mature, they start growing via color fill, which has happened over here. So you can see this is the latest leaf and that new growth point is not, can you see that? I don't know. That new growth point is not directly coming out of the petiole. Instead, it came via a color fill. So that's a sign that the plant is maturing and I don't want to lose that sort of progress. So I want to let that plant continuously grow up its pole, but it's obviously growing out of its pole a little bit. But like the other thing, the reason why I put it on one of these grow vertical poles is because they encourage nice root growth. So you can see all of these roots over here. Ignore the green bits, that's algae buildup because this was in my IKEA cabinet with pretty much perfect conditions. So algae is thriving, but it's not harmful to the plant. Oh, and by the way, look at these sexy backsides. So basically, even though I only potted up one plant, the plant multiplied itself. It's quite common with tissue cultured plants, especially, especially if I give them the perfect conditions to thrive in. So this plant has been living in my IKEA cabinet with very consistent everything, right? Consistent temperatures. It's usually much warmer in the cabinet than it is outside due to the grow light that's in there. The grow light is consistent. It gets the same amount of light every day um, and it's on for 12 hours and then off for 12 hours. It has high humidity, it's usually over 90% of humidity in there. And most importantly, there is no fluctuations, right? And so the humidity doesn't drop and rise uh, all the time. There's, um, the temperatures don't drop and rise too much as well. Like it's very just consistent, right? And all right, so today what I wanna do is like, normally what I would do now is I would take it off the moss pole, I would propagate it in between the nodes and so on, but I don't wanna lose my progress. I don't wanna, I, I don't want this to go back to juvenile. So in hindsight, I should have probably given it a larger moss pole, but you know, I didn't realize it was actually gonna mature that nicely. I was actually just expecting for that one vine to grow up and then I cut it into three to four bits and um, pass it on to some of my friends. But the plant did all of that by itself. So I already passed on cuttings to the friends that I promised a cutting. So all of this um, can stay mine. Actually, I cut one more for another friend, but the rest is gonna stay mine. So I'm gonna keep it as it is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give this a larger moss pole. So this over here is the like a mini, actually I cut this moss pole myself. Like I made it a bit shorter so it fits in my IKEA cabinet. I wanna put it on one of these grow vertical pros. It's basically a plastic sheet. This one is recycled plastic and then it's a netted um, coated wire mesh at the front and you just cable tie them together. First things first, let's take this out of its pot. And you can see I don't secure the pot in here at all. It's really just held in there by, I don't know. And also, as you can see, there's actually pretty much no root system inside the pot. The mix might have been a little bit too chunky for such a small plant, but it doesn't matter because the plant has grown a really decent root system into the moss pole. Huh? If it doesn't have a decent root system, it would not give me leaves like this. So whatever I'm doing is perfectly fine. And I've never done this before. I've never like converted a grow vertical moss pole into a larger grow vertical moss pole. So I'm just gonna wing it. Alrighty, here it is without the plastic. You can see it has some nice roots down there and I do not want to disturb them. Now what I'm gonna do is I'll take, I'll take this cutting over here. It's basically like a little piece of, uh, Little one of the secondary ones. It has cute little roots over here, but the roots kind of grew off the pole so they didn't attach. So I'll just pop that in water and then it's a great little propagation for a friend. What I'm gonna plan on doing is I'm just gonna cut a gap in the mesh over here and then I'll just slide that in. I don't know if that's a stupid idea or genius. I suppose proof is in the pudding. So I have this gap here now, obviously looks stupid. Now I'm gonna pop this in here and now I'm gonna cable tie. Oh, it's actually a bit thicker than I expected. I really don't wanna disturb anything in here. So I take some of the moss out at the top because it wasn't really needed. So now I'm just trying to connect the old mesh to the new mesh. The first one's gonna be the hardest. Ah, oh, 
come on. But once I've got this one, it has a little bit more structure already. Okay, I don't need to connect every single piece of the grid. I'm just gonna connect it in two, three spots. Alrighty, the next challenge that we have, besides the lighting situation, is I now need to fill these little gaps with moss because my moss pole is a little, the new moss pole is a little bit larger and I don't want to have gaps. Now, of course, you want to have enough moss in here so that it can retain moisture. Moss is the bit that retains the moisture. So the less moss you've got in here, the more often you'll need to water because there's nothing that can retain the moisture. But at the same time, plants also love aeration. So you don't want to pack it too tightly so that the plant or like the roots don't get any oxygen through. All right, now I just need to fill the top. I think I'm pretty happy with this, so. One moment, let me clean up my mess. Excuse me, sir. Can I get my chair back, please? Do you want this chair? Come here, go to this one. Okay, so here it is. I'm very happy with it. Oh my God, look how beautiful that looks in the sun. And now let me pot this up. So it's my normal aeroid mix as always. To be honest, it's so chunky. I don't really have the desire to do anything about it. Now, obviously before it was in a smaller pot, now it's in a 14 centimeter pot, which also means that the pot is a little bit deeper, which means that anything from here below will be inside the aeroid mix. So I'm gonna cut any leaf because they're just gonna rot anyway. So then here it's a bit of a mess, but there's like lots of little noids over here. They're all gonna appreciate being inside the mix. To be honest, should I even put a pot on there? You know what, screw this. What I'm gonna do is I'll leave it. I don't want a pot for this one, not yet. Change of plans. I'm gluing these leaves back on, just kidding, they're gone. But actually change of plans. I've actually decided I wanna keep this inside my Ikea cabinet. And I wanna keep it inside my Ikea cabinet because it has such a good time in there. So why fix what's not broken? Also, it's going into the colder season over here, so it's not the best time for it to get used to a different environment because the different environment, aka all the environment outside of the cabinet, is just not perfect for the tropical plants at the moment. Like the ones behind me, they're used to that environment, so they're fine, but because this one just came out of the perfect conditions, I'd rather put it back in there. But I'm not gonna give it a pot because there's not really any roots for the pot anyway. So it's just gonna make it heavy and kind of annoying hanging in the cabinet with the pot. This way it's gonna be so much easier to just hang there. And quite clearly, like there are no roots over here. I've experimented before with growing plants without a pot at all. And it wasn't even inside the cabinet and it was fine. So. I'm feeling, I'm feeling experimental today. So I reckon that's it. Okay, I love this idea. Yep, yeah, yeah. All right, let me show you what I've done. So because the pole is really tall, I didn't, like if the pole starts here, the plant is really only at the bottom. I want this to be uh, closer to the light. And now you can really see how beautiful these leaves are as well. Perfect. So what I've done, I've got this magnetic hook, and excuse how dirty my cabinet is, I've got this magnetic hook at the top, so I just, because the thing is made from metal, so it's hanging here now. So it's in like prime position, kind of wedged in the corner, if you know what I mean. And no pot, so when I water, I just need to make sure that I put like a little bowl underneath for, to catch the dribble. Two months ago, I repotted this plant and I decided to not give this plant a pot. And so far, so good. Let me give you an update. All right, first of all, this is kind of the bottom of the plant. You can see that this is normally where the pot would be, but there weren't really any roots here anyway. But what you can also see is that there's three plants in here. Actually, I think this, is a, this thing is actually a fourth plant, but we've got one vine over here. 
that is growing a little bit leggy. You can see how leggy the growth is over here, right? Really large internodal spacing on this small one over here. And that's just because it's shaded by the larger plant. Same with this one over here. We've got a small vine on this side over here. Really small leaves, not really growing. Um, and again, that would be because it is being shaded. The light comes from the top in my IKEA cabinet, so these big leaves would take up everything. Now this was a sun-stressed leaf, and I actually really, really love the look of that. Um, but yeah, it was just getting sun-stressed. It was a little bit too high up in my IKEA cabinet. So we're getting that red coming through from the back like crazy. I lowered it a little bit, and it has been much happier since. So it has this leaf, then this leaf over here, and now this is the newest leaf that it's still unfurling. How good is that? All right, let me show you the underside, and this is probably a good way to show you. Look how cool these backsides of these leaves are. Yeah. And I love the red petioles as well. Now let's talk about roots. You can see every single node has grown roots into the pole. See all of these? All of these are roots. Now it is a little wonky on there actually. It hasn't attached as tightly as I would want it to. So I'm just going to take a little piece of wire and I'm going to pin it to it just to provide it with a little bit of extra support. And obviously if I want this plant to thrive to its full potential, then I need to provide these roots something to attach to or like, you know, grow into. So then I might need to consider giving it a pod. Also, I'm thinking if I wait another month or month and a half, it's probably a well and truly outgrown the IKEA cabinet by then. But by then it should also be spring over here and then I think I'll have an easier time transitioning this from inside the cabinet to outside the cabinet and that's probably when I'm gonna pot it up as well. So I'll need to wait a month and a half or so, but for you this should be instant. Alrighty, and we're back with another update on the El Choco. So, Oof, I'm losing the timeline a little bit, but if I'm not mistaken, I got this teeny tiny plant at the beginning of November last year. So it's about 10 months since I first got this plant, but I really gave it this moss pole, this grow vertical pole that it's currently on that I gave it in April. So that is four months ago, four-ish months ago. So basically, for, four, for the last four months, this plant has only grown on the grow vertical pole. It has not been potted up. So let me show you the progress. First of all, this leaf is its newest leaf. And how bloody sexy is this leaf? I know. I've actually used a piece of twine to kind of tie this plant closer to the pole. Not because it wasn't already uh, attaching itself, it has certainly attached itself. You can see all of these roots going in, but just to keep it a little bit closer to it, uh, because I was worried that it's kind of just gonna flop over, if that makes sense. I don't know, I don't think that made sense, but doesn't hurt it, just helps the roots find their way into the pole much quicker. You can see it's growing via a caterpillar over here and the caterpillar is getting a decent size, right? I'm mean, loving that red color. Within the next month or so, I need to get it out of my IKEA cabinet anyway. It is just way too big and it's taking up too much space and I have a lot of tiny plants that I bought recently that I think will benefit from the cabinet much more. It is now getting to a stage where I think it's mature enough to have an easier time uh, getting used to my conditions outside of the cabinet. Plus the conditions outside of the cabinet are getting much better given that today is the first day of spring. So I reckon in about a month or so I'll take this out of the cabinet, I'll pop it in a pot, not because it needs a pot, but I mean the more room for roots you provide it, the more roots it can grow, the better, right? But in the IKEA cabinet, I'm just really stressed for room, so I didn't really wanna bother giving it a pot. And I wanna mention again, I took five propagations of this plant already, and it isn't even a year old, and it was the tiniest plant. So this plant is honestly my biggest success story of the last year or so. I think it's really incredible how nicely this has started growing 
while I was still able to propagate it so much over that year. So yeah, 10 out of 10, would recommend. Hello everybody, I just wanted to give you a really quick update. A couple of weeks ago I potted up this plant, I actually filmed it but I was dumb enough to film it in slow motion so there's also no sound to it in all of that. So um, yeah. As part of the repot, I had to take her out of the IKEA cabinet and she's now living in my office with all the other velvet plants. And this is the newest leaf that it's currently pushing out. Bigger than ever and extremely beautiful. Loving the red backs as well. So she still seems to be happy. Very happy actually. Alrighty, so that's good. In about two months time this plant will be a full year and I suppose I'll wait for the full year before I finalize this video for you to see it. So I will check in with you in a couple of months time to give you the full 12 months update on this plant. Awesome, thank you so much Jan from the past for giving us all of these updates. But here we are, it has been exactly one year and this plant has been thriving despite the fact that I took multiple propagations of this plant. So I shared this with four of my friends already um, and I still have a decent mother plant left that just pushed out a new leaf over here and it has these beautiful red bags. Right? And sorry guys, this is actually the first video that I'm filming at my new apartment. So lighting is still a bit of a mystery to me or what's gonna translate well on camera, on screen, later on. Now there are also a couple more shoots down here that I could easily take off the moss pole and propagate further, but um, I have no desire. They're actually really readily available by now. And they've come down in price even further. So I'd rather have a lush pole instead. Now, what have I learned about this plant over the course of that year? First and foremost, let's not talk about this plant in particular, but what I've learned is that there's no need to be scared of small little tissue culture, I think they call them plantlets. Uh, I mean, it would, that was my first concern. It's like, if I get a plant that is so tiny, am I just going to wait decades for this plant to finally get to a size where I'm actually happy with it? Um, no, it actually increased in leaf size really, really quickly. But obviously that is due to good conditions that I provided the plant with as well. But when acquiring a plant, I actually really like getting a small plant. First of all, that small plant doesn't take up too much space in my place. You know, I already have a lot of plants. So it is perfect to just put in my IKEA cabinet, which again provides the plants with perfect conditions to grow up in. And secondly, I find it 
so much more rewarding to get a small plant and see what I can grow this plant into over the course of XYZ years. If this plant would have grown half as much in that year, I would have still been happy with the progress. It's more about the fact that it is growing and it is improving and it is increasing. That's kind of exciting to me. Now, let's talk about the plant in itself. So as I mentioned, it grew up in the IKEA cabinet, which has really perfect conditions like 99% humidity and so on. Now, obviously it's too large for the IKEA cabinet now. So it moved out of the IKEA cabinet and I honestly have not noticed any sort of deterioration in leaves or like it throwing a hissy fit. It seems to be just fine with average room humidity. What is the average humidity in the room? Well, it depends on whereabouts you live. Um, I suppose Sydney specifically, I live quite close to the coast. Um, it's fairly humid over here. I would say the average indoor humidity is at around about 60%. So that's obviously fairly high-ish, but it is not 99 like it was in the IKEA cabinet and the plant is still happy. Now, when it comes to temperatures, you know, I obviously only had this plant for a year and it uh, stayed in the IKEA cabinet over winter. So it never really dropped under 20 degrees, but in general, with aeroids, I would say try and avoid any temperatures under 16 degrees if you want your plant to thrive. Specifically where the plant is much smaller, smaller plants, you know, they're not as resilient, they're not as tolerant to adversity, let's say. Once the plant matures a little bit, they're a little bit tougher, they can handle a little bit more, but specifically while they're small, I would try to keep the temperature around about 20 degrees, that should be fine. But look, that is not a one rule fits all. That's just the temperature that I gave it. You can probably get similar results with different temperatures. Ultimately, I just wanna share with you the conditions that I've grown it in, so you can replicate it if you want to. Really important is airflow. There has always been great airflow in my IKEA cabinet as well as in um, my plant room. That just ensures that you're not experiencing any sort of fungal issues, specifically where you have a moss pole and you keep the moss pole moist. You wanna make sure that there's always good airflow. Airflow also makes the plants grow a little more resilient. It basically mimics wind that they would experience in nature. I water it approximately once a week, but again, really depends on the conditions that it's in. Inside the IKEA cabinet, super high humidity, humidity environment. I don't need to water it all too often or I don't need to water it as often as when I put it in a place that has uh, only 60% humidity instead. Obviously as the plant grows larger with larger leaves, larger leaves use more water and so on. So then you also need to increase your watering a little bit. But at the moment I would still say approximately once a week because I have it on a plastic backed grow vertical moss pole that just retains the moisture much better than an open moss pole instead. With my weekly watering I use GT Foliage Focus and as always it is linked in the description. I use it at the week dilution so I'm basically like giving it readily available nutrients with every watering but not too much but not too many that it could cause any sort of harm so just a weak dilution but on a weekly basis. I also did the experiment of this plant of not having a pot in the first place and quite clearly the plant was still thriving. I mean it has a pot by now but to be honest I can't see much of a root system. There's some roots there but Ultimately, I don't think there's all too many roots within the actual pot itself. Again, the moss pole is a vertical extension of your pot, so most of the roots would be within the pole. Ultimately, as long as it grows nice, large leaves like this, I don't care whereabouts the roots are, I don't care how many roots it has, it's clearly happy. You don't need a huge pot. Often people actually give their plants a pot that is way too big for the size of the plant and it's to the plant's detriment rather than actually being to the plant's advantage. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to do an experiment because ultimately proof is in the pudding. But of course, not having a pot means it doesn't have a base to stand on, meaning it can only hang. So as soon as I took it out of the IKEA cabinet, I gave it a pot so I can now stand it on uh, my desk in my plant room. And that is all I have to say. I think, did I miss anything? Oh, I forgot something. That's what I was like, I knew there was something else I wanted to talk about. Every time I post about this plant, I get so many comments from people being shocked that I grow this plant as a climber because they grow it as a crawler. All right, well, I mean, it is displaying the perfect signs of being a climber. It climbed its whole moss pole within a year. I mean, 
that's pretty climby in my in my books but I believe and I can't speak from experience because I've only grown that one but I believe that could be due to two things. I believe that when these plants are a little more juvenile, they're more likely to actually climb. And then I think with maturity, the internodal spicing will get quite short. And I believe then uh, you could technically also grow it as a crawler without it really bothering the plant. I don't know. Or the other theory that I've got is that it could be similar to like a Monstera deliciosa, for example. Yes, if you give a Monstera deliciosa a tree, that plant will grow up a tree. But if you give a Monstera deliciosa no tree, then that plant will also crawl. Ultimately, plants are determined to survive. So I suppose plants will adjust to the conditions that you give them. Not all of them, you know, sometimes you can't cheat nature. But maybe with this one, it is one of these plants that you can grow either way, depending on your preference. It could also be that the tissue cultured one behaves slightly different to one that would come from, um, you know, uh, the wild. But we don't really want to get plants from the wild. I love that these plants are now available via tissue culture. That doesn't make this plant any better or worse or inferior or superior. It just means that this plant can be produced in large quantities at a really affordable price without harming the native environment. So I think that is a win-win for everybody. Apart from the people that spent two, three thousand dollars on a non-tissue culture plant three years ago because they weren't patient enough <laughs> and now want to sell their non-tissue cultured version uh, at a premium. So they obviously then advertise it as non-tissue culture like it is a good thing. I don't know. Each to their own, but to me, honestly, I don't care if my plants are tissue culture or non-tissue culture. I just judge them for what they look like. And this plant looks stunning to me. So anyway, that was a lengthy video, but I suppose we covered an entire year's worth of growth. I hope you enjoyed it. Like, subscribe and leave a nice comment and I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye, my baby. Mwah. Are you enjoying the new couch? It's good, huh? You blend in nicely. Looks good on you, my baby. You look great on this couch. <laughs>